What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. Exploration of the Pokémon world is a key reason for why we love the series. Finding that rare creature hidden away in the furthest recesses of the wild provides a feeling of accomplishment, and helps you get to know the region that you will inevitably be put in charge of as champion. But how often do we really give thought about how we get from one place to the next? We generally take such things for granted, that is, until we're forced to give it up. So let's take a look back through all of the methods of locomotion in the Pokémon universe, and rate which ones are the worst and the best. And of course these will only be for things that we could personally experience, so no submarines or space shuttles. But we will be focused on things that can move you from one place to another, and not just a couple of floors up like the mundane simplicity of the elevator and so on. So. Here is the definitive ranking for every mode of transportation in Pokémon. To start off, the absolute worst means of transit in the Pokémon world has got to be spin tiles. Who invented these? Spin tiles are infuriating devices that launch a person in a singular direction until they hit something else, which could be a wall, but is usually another spin tile. But even worse than that, they somehow cause the poor trapped soul to rotate uncontrollably until they hit said stopping point. It's like everyone that steps on one is doing their best audition to become the Tasmanian Devil. Whoever designed these clearly had a failed experiment on their hands, because the main use these things see are in hideouts for criminal organizations, who just want to keep people out, but are too dumb to realize that their own grunts will have to endure the same illness-inducing spin cycle on a daily basis. There is a reason that they've started to move away from these contraptions in more recent generations, because getting stuck in a maze of the world's worst reject exercise machines is bound to ruin anyone's day, but more importantly, will actively prevent you from getting to where you're going. Just a slight step up from spin tiles are conveyor belts. Now to be fair, I don't think these are meant for human transport in the first place, but they are by nature restricted in their functionality. Usually only found in industrial areas, conveyors are great for going one way very fast, and they don't whirl you around until you want to puke. However, they can only go so far, and they are only one way. So these don't come up often, but that's for a very good reason. Another hugely limited method of transport is the cable car. Not often used for numerous reasons, it is likewise narrowed in focus, only being able to follow a predetermined track, and generally it only has two stops. Plus, as far as the games go, it forces you to watch a cutscene every time you use it, so that's probably why you don't really see cable cars around most regions. Next up is the warp panel. Now, this is definitely an improvement in terms of comfort for the user over spin tiles, and the technology itself would be revolutionary, likely being one of the best methods of transport possible. The problem arises from the execution of warp panels, which severely limit their potential. For some reason, warp panels are almost exclusively used indoors to other locations in the same building. Perhaps that's a limitation with the system itself, requiring a closed circuit to maintain the integrity of the matter transport, and they simply can't teleport an indefinite distance to another region. I can buy that. That would make sense if they were still relatively early on in their research on the subject. What doesn't make sense to me is why there are frequently dozens of warp panels all crammed in the same small building. This is a technology that could perceivably change the world, and their best use for it is to make people piddle around a gym blindly? Best case scenario is it's a one-time useful shortcut to get you out and heal your Pokémon. But once used, you have to slog your way back through however you got there in the first place. Maybe if they can upgrade it further in the future, it'll climb the list. But for now, warp panels are extremely cool, but extremely restricted in terms of actual travel. Just above that, we have... Walking. Maybe the most boring method possible, since we can just do that in our world. Walking is the only means of transit that's available to you from the beginning, that you can use without trudging through any arduous tasks to try and earn better ways to move. Walking will get you where you want to go, eventually. To some, that's one of the reasons why they won't go back to play the older games, 
because they're stuck with walking, and the default speed is tediously slow. Walking is a solid way to get you where you're going, but the sluggish pace means that it's one of the less preferred ways to get anywhere. We have seen automobiles throughout the Pokémon world, but when it comes down to using them, they suddenly seem to scatter. While it is probably the most common method of transportation in our world, it seems that people here prefer to use almost anything else. Really, the only standout examples are the immense rip-off taxi cabs in Lumio City that only drive you around there, and the Executor bus in Alola that's only purpose is to cut a possibly interesting route in half. However, these means are practically instantaneous, so while limited, having a lot of horsepower behind your movements will help to whisk you on your way. I also find much of the same to be true for airplanes, which are similarly sparse in the Pokémon realm. The only difference here is that airplanes seem to be able to take you to places that you otherwise wouldn't be able to go, or at least would take forever to get to if you weren't in the air. Maybe we'll see more pilots in the future instead of just in the Unova region. Boats in the Pokémon world are useful in their own way. They can provide near-instantaneous travel between two locations, at least from a gameplay perspective. The downside, of course, being that this convenience is only eligible for towns on the coast, for obvious reasons. So, best case scenario, you could use the boats to half a dozen cities or other locations in any given region. Occasionally, you will get to spend some time on a boat and can battle other trainers, though some might find it monotonous and just want to reach their destination, which is fair. In which case, you could try and go to sleep in your bed enough to let the journey pass. Sometimes there are even boats that you can enter that don't go anywhere. So when boats work, they are tremendously useful, especially if it's early in your journey. However, certain inconsistencies in travel time and the complete inability to travel anywhere inland puts boats squarely in the middle of the pack. One of the best improvements in the franchise to date was the advent of running shoes. Doubling speed across the entire game was groundbreaking, especially once it could be applied to indoors. Running is one of the simplest but most effective means of continued locomotion throughout the games, so much so that it has become the default in the games when choosing a direction, removing walking altogether. If all other means of transport fail, there will always be good old reliable running. Similar reasoning could be applied to roller skates in the Kalos region, being the only place where we've seen them to date. They are pretty much just fancy wheeled running as far as mechanics go, but the reason it places slightly higher on the list is that the skates can get you into a few other hidden areas that you wouldn't otherwise be able to access. So being as good as running, with the odd chance of finding a helpful item, gives it the necessary boost. Next up are trains. There are actually a surprising number of useful trains in the Pokémon universe, compared to other conventional transportation. The first of which was the Express Magnet Train between Goldenrod and Saffron Cities, uniting the Johto and Kanto regions so that a short scene of a speeding train was all it took to travel to a neighboring region, instead of having to use multiple flies or waterfall. Trains are also used to take you to places that you couldn't get to by foot, like in the Unova and Kalos regions. And as recently as Sword and Shield, trains played a huge part in the region, being a fast transit system for at least half a dozen spots around the Galar region. Not only making trains more relevant than ever, but also a fundamental part of the region's identity, and that will only continue with the upcoming Isle of Armor expansion as well. Cracking the top five, we start with surfing. Surfing is one of the ultimate ways of backtracking in the games, letting you enter new areas that you couldn't get to the first time around. You have to pass by so many bodies of water before you can even get the ability to surf. Even certain hometowns have this capability of opening up more once you're able to ride the waves. And over the years, there have been different ways of surfing, just by teaching the HM to any Pokémon that could learn it, or other times it's reserved for a Lapras or a very talented partner. The only reason surfing doesn't rank higher is because of the constant interruptions, where each free moment holds terror that you'll be assaulted by another creature from the deep. The convenience of surfing cannot be denied, but the propensity for getting constantly attacked by various water types does give some trainers pause at this particular mode of transportation. 
but certain other modes of marine travel, such as dive and waterfall, are only accessible by surfing first. So there are ups and downs to consider. Next is fairly similar with Poke Ride. It's like surfing in that it's done with Pokémon, but not just on the water. Although Poke Ride does that too. Poke Ride increases your speed at varying levels to move over the terrain, generally faster than you could on your own. But each one comes with its own unique abilities that will help you along in your adventure. You can smash through rocks with ease, you can gallop across uneven terrain, you can even ride a giant item finder. Even ones that don't increase your speed, like Machamp, make it so that you can shove massive boulders, and presumably deter any would-be bullies. There are also ride Pokémon in Kalos, capable of getting trainers past treacherous areas that would be very dangerous to attempt on foot. And even cute little ones that can hop back over ledges. I was frankly surprised that this wasn't carried over into the Galar region, but I do believe that it will return one day, as it's a wonderful combination of increased travel efficiency and integration of Pokémon into everyday life, which are two of the best things about the series. Just above that, I put the bike. Running was one thing, but the bike ratchets up the speed to a whole new level. It's a welcomed reprieve when we finally obtain the glorious two-wheeled contraption and get to pedal our way back to anywhere we've been much quicker than before. It might even let you take a trip back to that last city that you wouldn't have done otherwise for fear of taking too long. Several regions also have specific paths that you can't access without a bike, usually filled with lots of trainers to fight that give you money. And actually, in the most recent games, the bike effectively took over for surfing, making it a literal all-terrain vehicle. Next thing you know, it'll take over for flying as well. And speaking of... The only thing better than rapid movement would be instantaneous transportation between locations. And the only way to do that in the Pokémon world is with Fly. Well, actually there is Teleport, which would qualify, I guess, but... It seems to be pretty much the same to me, both using a Pokémon's move to jump the trainer to another location. Usually a Pokémon Center. The only difference is that Teleport is for the last Pokémon Center used, no matter how far away that might be. To me, flying has the edge due to the possibility of picking multiple destinations. Talking about not wanting to go back to previous towns, most of the time if it can be helped, players will never return to old locations until they get fly, so they don't have to trudge through all those routes again. Fly is one of the only HMs from past games that seem to be a necessity. With most team compositions, having one slot reserved for an early route flying type, just so that later in the game, you could have the convenient access to every city that you've previously visited. And it even managed to broaden to certain routes as well, to really pinpoint wherever you needed to go. But of course, recently, Fly has moved to be a feature in Poké Ride, as well as a special technique, and even a Corviknight taxi service. Having fly, and teleport to an extent, is so much more useful than boats or trains or even bikes by just getting you where you want to go immediately, without all the worst parts in between, allowing you to simply get on with your journey. There's just one thing that I think surpasses fly, and that is soaring. Soaring is effectively the middle part that fly skips over, where you ride on a Pokémon through the skies to your destination. And you have to remember that in Gen 6, we were still relying on HMs, so having this capability to soar from one spot to the next made it possible to remove a designated flyer from the team, freeing up party space for the first time ever. You not only get to experience gorgeous views, but you truly get access to areas that you never could otherwise. Good luck taking a bike or a train to these outlying islands, and even if a boat could get close, there's nowhere for it to dock. And none of those could reach up into the sky for encounters either. That's the other thing about Soaring. Not only is it done exclusively through legendary Pokémon, but it is a means by which to collect dozens of other legendaries, as well as standard Pokémon unavailable anywhere else to fill out your Pokédex. 
This carries over into what I believe the only other time soaring was implemented in the Ultra games, while on the back of the Cosmoem evolution through Ultra Space. Through these portals, you could likewise catch Legends and Ultra Beasts, as well as Shiny Hunt with relative ease. While it might not be as immediate as Fly itself, the sheer possibilities that soaring affords that are unique from every other mode of transportation, and the beautiful scenery that you couldn't possibly get anywhere else, makes this the best method of travel I've seen to date. I just hope we'll see it again. So, those are the rankings for every type of transportation to date in the Pokémon world. What are your favorite ways to travel in Pokémon? Let me know down in the comments. Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today. And we'll see you around next time!